Good morning. My Abba are back. Here's the plan. It's a new work week. They will, of course, be continuing with the walls upstairs. They will be continuing with the wall around the perimeter. They will be adding yet more plaster to the swimming pool. And it is beginning to look smoother. And I'll show you what might just be the most over-engineered compost shed you've ever seen. What could possibly go wrong? We're going to start here in the kitchen where we are at risk of becoming the clients from hell. We asked the builder and the engineer to mark out for us on the floor where the cabinets would be, the kitchen island, the fridge, all the, the different units, which they've done. My beautiful Asawa would like to have the kitchen island going as you look at it from left to right. I think from my preference I'd go the other way, but that's, it's not a big deal. But if we do go left to right, the refrigerator, which we had over here before, can't be there because to open the fridge door it's too close. It's resulted in a number of possible changes. So the fridge now goes back over here where it was on the very first renderings we got. We would then have probably floor to ceiling cabinets here and would put into there the ovens that may or may not mean, well, it's not just fitting, but my wife thinks aesthetically, if we got rid of that window, the whole kitchen will look better. So we have asked the builder for yet another set of renderings so we can actually get, a, again, a picture in our heads from a picture on a piece of paper of what that would all look like. So yeah, we are becoming a bit of a nightmare here. Hopefully, it is not too much of an issue because obviously nothing's been built except various bits of conduit have gone in. But I don't think that would make too much difference. In the pantry, a couple of people, and I will put names up, but a couple of people commented on the conduit that connected the junction box that you can probably just make out towards the left side and the, what now looks like a triangle below it. Previously, the conduit ran at roughly 45 degrees from that junction box down to the access point here. At least two people have said, that's not very good. It may or may not meet Philippine building code, we're not sure, but the risk is that at some future point, it becomes much harder to identify where conduit is. So if anything is ever done inside this pantry, which is okay, not that likely, but the same thing obviously applies in the rest of the house. It would be much harder to identify where that conduit is and we could drill into it. So, they had done the fix. The conduit now goes vertically down and horizontally across. So we'll have a much better idea of where that is. And we've asked them to apply the same principle to all other conduit in the house. Jerry Sweden asked, were the junction boxes level? Because it looked as though they might not be. Uh, he was absolutely correct in saying maybe that was an optical illusion because of the camera. Well, Jerry, I've had a wander around today and I think it was a bit of an illusion. Uh, as far as I can see, they all look good and level to me. But thanks for keeping an eye on things. The dining room is getting a front wall. This is new. Previously, they'd left both this room and the living room open to give them easy access into the house. They appear to have now decided that the living room alone is enough. So we're all going in. And Marvin is windowing in this wall that is at the back end of the stairs. That's new. At least the top half of it is new. Back up in Ronwell and JR's room. The room that when they come and stay, this will be theirs to share because they've done all the walls. 
much more progress here and along the front. JR's just getting a bit of a breather out the hot sun. It is a hot day today. And Richard, one of the two Richards, has now started to frame in two windows on this wall where previously we only had one. There's a little bit more progress over here with actually the other Richard who's working on this bedroom wall. Actually, it's the bathroom wall. I'll get this one right eventually. I'm outside the home theatre room uh, where you can see all this conduit in the wall. My dad and I think at least one other person at some point has commented on where you have these pipes, particularly the large diameter pipes. Those are the areas that are going to be probably the most subject to potential cracking of plaster. Now, none of these walls, as we've said repeatedly, are load-bearing, they're not structural. But where you have these gaps, any movement could quite easily cause cracking. Only on the surface, most likely, but cracking nonetheless. So my dad suggested using effectively a wire mesh across these areas where you have pipes. And I did have a quick look online this morning and things like chicken wire seem to be acceptable. But I've mentioned it to the builder, he'll, he'll know better than me. And he has agreed that yes, where we have uh, pipes in the wall, they will apply chicken wire, chicken mesh, before they plaster. And hopefully that reduces the risk of that plaster cracking. At the swimming pool, the never ending plastering process may be coming to an end. Yet more plaster going on here in the deep end. They have now got it up to the thickness that they had with the kind of guide towards the bottom of the pool. And for the first time, smoothing. So it looks as though this is the last full layer of plaster that's going on here, and it will be a smooth finish. Back at the perimeter wall outside the property, looking on the bit around the corner, they did indeed pour this top tie beam around the corner in one go. Yeah, the form hasn't been taken off here obviously yet but it has been taken off the other side so the concrete pour extends to roughly the middle of this section and they are now preparing to do more of the top tie beam and columns. O'Donnell's putting the forms in. Rico today is the fella up top you can just about maybe make out his head poking up above the parapet and we'll go down and see how they're getting on with the obstacles. It's hard work, slow progress getting through these big old lumps. No sign of the chainsaw this morning. They're just chipping away, bit by bit. But we're getting there. And I'm over at the north wall, where my Christmas present is starting to take shape. This only ever gets work done on it on a Sunday, but it's coming along. And yeah, as I said in the intro, it might be the most over-engineered compost bay and this end bit will actually be a storage shed that you've ever seen. Concrete hollow blocks for a compost bay. Well, actually three compost bays plus the shed. I don't think I've ever seen compost bays being built from concrete hollow block. And they will in between the, the three compost bays that are marked out by these steel poles, they will be wooden sections despite the termites, which we can remove, as the front will also be wood, which we can remove, so we can turn compost from one bay into the next and have easy access. This is the shed part, which I didn't realize was coming as well. A nice little bonus. A new use for a cardboard box that I've never seen before, sun protection. Once more, ingenuity in the Philippines at work. What a great idea.
the cutting, digging and hacking crew. Hacking. You would have seen in the uh, drone footage that yes, they did have a bit of a go with the chainsaw, but we're back to manual. So Rico here and Coelito here. Uh, using the uh, big manual stuff and they're taking it in turns two more waiting to have a go in a second but still a lot way to go back at the pool it's obviously not that easy to make out but we do have after i don't know 197 layers of plaster we have a smooth finish and that is being extended further over here they're about a third of the way around the pool at this point no signs of any more progress just yet on the central island we are continuing to debate what the central part of the wall into the dining room from this side will be constructed of uh, nathan johnson gave us a suggestion of a company who basically work with sheet metal uh, and can do various finishes on that metal. That's one option. It could, of course, still be concrete hollow blocks, although that does give us those problems of access if the rails for the sliding doors have a problem. Another option might be some kind of just simple plywood or, or other form of wood that we can screw in and unscrew when we need to so there's still various options there beyond that you will see the front wall for the dining room they have come a long way just in today and we're not at the end of the day yet i do have to finish a little early today but we're only 45 minutes away from the end of the day today so they will get a little bit more of this done possibly Back in the living room, on the stairs, we do have a new rendering which will show you the kind of decorative enclosure, I suppose, for the stairs, uh, what that might look like. Let me know what you think in the comments. And while we're here, this main window for the living room starting to get framed in. The one over here at the back of the stairs complete this is looking from within the bedroom on the northeast corner and the wall over there is once again ron will working on that one to get that up to height and in this room the bathroom is just here and this is back in ron will and jr's room facing east just looking at the other side of the wall we looked at a couple of moments ago. Uh, here at the front, JR's getting the front wall up. The external wall for the central bedroom facing west. Richard's almost got that one up to height. And now we're starting to get this wall that encloses that bedroom and protects everybody from falling down to the floor below because of this big gap here but the other Richard is working on that wall so that's the end of the day for me these guys now have 36 minutes left to go but that's the end of day 114 and looking here across at the west facing aspect of the house a lot of it is now walled in still some gaps the master bedroom up in the top right hand corner, the window on the spa area, and the dirty kitchen yet to be done. But a lot more upstairs has been completed. And as you've just seen, that's true around a lot of the upstairs floor. So that's it, 114, done and dusted. See you tomorrow.